able to see uh, to see it uh, to see it uh, uh, to see it afterwards and it will be available how is everyone how is how is are you still in lockdown or are you are you uh, are you roaming freely we are currently we are all in the office so we are working from the office schools are still closed here but uh, otherwise uh, we are on normal operation okay so max is saying in the camp i don't know what it means in the camp do you know what's in campo? the camp it's like at home or yeah campo campo means it's countryside. Countryside. countryside countryside okay and um, better business climate okay so I, I i think we'll start we'll see whether some more uh, people are coming the country opens up more and more our production is running so we are not uh, that much uh, we don't have that much impact from the from the lockdowns as other companies as restaurants or the hotels or airline business so we are we are we are fine i have the pleasure to will welcome here uh, uh Vasily, who is joining us as the technical pre-sales and uh, because he's uh, far more technical than i am so if he would have any questions uh he's uh, he's ready to answer them and maybe he'll he'll be also so able to add some some of the information because he was primarily working on the embedded project that we were running or are, 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 are running and uh, later on will be also joined by david tier our chief technical officer uh, who is uh, who is doing the new setup or the new design uh, for simple pack for o for the simple pack for o embedded enabling far more uh, external sensors than you know, we had previously so let's start with the presentation. Uh, <clears throat> the presentation is not that long. This time we'll, 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 we'll have open floor for the questions. So uh, we'll, we'll keep that for the, for the afterwards of the presentation. <clears throat> Maybe just short uh, introduction, so it will be just less than 30 minutes. And uh, technical level will be intermediate. We are not going into API directly or into resistors or, or but, but you can, of course, you can ask and we can tackle that in the, in the, um, in, in the, after the presentation. So what are what we what, when we are talking about embedded solutions? So what we, what do we think what what what, what do we have for an embedded solution? Basically, you have two ways how to deploy an IoT project. You can uh, you can buy an IoT device and you can have it as an add-on to the current to the current uh, to the current product. So let's have a car, and if you want to have a, a tracker in the car, you put a sample pack into the car and you can track the car. The other way around is that you uh, produce directly the products in the factory already with the IoT devices inside of them. So you can produce cars with the trackers inside them. You can produce street lights with light sensors inside of them. You can produce mouse traps uh, with uh, Sigfox in, in, inside of the mouse traps. So you can have many, many more. Uh, you have uh, we, you have the option to. Uh, uh, not to have IoT as an afterthought, but having uh, IoT as um, Internet of Things as an inter integral in integral part of the part of the product and bring more value to the customers having it integrated in, into the product. And we see, we think that this is this is the future. That the future that add-on devices are nice to have, but for us uh, Internet of Things is. is having is being able to embed uh, devices directly into the into the products and in, in the production and not as an afterthought um, 
So uh, what, 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 uh, how we try to differ in, in the simple pack for row embedded, basically simple pack for, for row embedded or simple industry for row embedded because the PCBs in both simple packs and simple industries are the same. Uh, they bring with it uh, several, several of the features. Uh, definitely a stable platform. So we have been we have been developing simple pack since now three or four years. Yeah. So we are at the fourth generation of it, and uh, and we are currently working. And I and I'll mention because I forgot to put it into the slides. We are uh, we are working on the fifth generation, uh, but we are pretty happy with the fourth generation. So uh, it's a very stable platform. It's uh, we think that the firmware and the design of the firmware of the API six it's it's very rich and it's ready to deploy. Uh, it's stable, and we are still working on the stabilization. So we are working on rewriting some of the parts of the firmware in order to be even more st stable. Uh, but it's it's definitely it's stable in the production, it's stable in the field deployment. Uh, it's it can be a little bit sometimes tricky when you want to configure configure it via downlink. So we are not able to to test all the scenarios. Uh, but as we are as we are testing more and more, so even the downlink uh, settings and downlink downlink all the modes are being tested far better. But we are completely stable and fit in the field deployment once you'll have the proper setting so so that's working uh ultra low consumption you know that we started simple pack as the smallest device smallest available sigfox device and i still think it's a smallest available sigfox device so we are constrained by the battery size i don't know if any sim of if any small uh, any really smaller device yeah, yeah so we are still the smallest one so we had to, we were limited by the battery capacity so we are really pushing for the battery consumption, and we think that uh, we are at currently we are at what at the edge what what is possible. So for the efficiency of the MCU and for the efficiency of the radio part, we are really we are really at the lowest physically possible some of the low, lowest possible physical layers. Uh, what is uh, really important and what we what we are proud of is uh, for especially for the embedded solution is the ultra small size because um, uh, pcb if you don't need wi-fi so the pcb size is 25 on 60 millimeters and it's only two millimeters thick if you if you don't need all the sensors and it's very good if you, if you if you need to embed it into any kind of uh, case or if you want if you need to integrate it into the door frame or window frame or if you need to integrate it into a mouse trap so it's really important to have small size so we are we are uh, we are we are proud of the size uh, from the battery from the battery supply we are flexible from 2 to 3.6 volts the embedded solutions they don't come mostly they don't come up with batteries so we are embedded it must be it must be said that embedded solution is something it's always a project-based stuff so it's not something that you would be just you would click on the e-shop so it's it's so it's project-based and it can be integrated from the smallest batteries if you if you need a few hundred messages only up to the really big batteries if you if you need uh, several several hundred messages a day um temperature range is classic uh, we have also the hot edition so we are able we are able to operate up to up till 105 degrees celsius and uh, we were just testing it in uh, we were just testing the boards and we were able to go up to 150 50 degrees but in this case it was not broadcasting any longer but we survived and as as soon as the temperature got lower so we were able to broadcast again uh, class zero based radio performance available in all radio zones and more, more are compatible and we think that the price is the price performance ratio it's it's not bad and i have two things to add yes, hello thanks. everyone uh one very good feature for embedded is that we have several connectors for battery so we can um, have the battery that is uh, directly soldered on the board uh, we can also support you with a connector for external battery um in the simple industry we have also 
uh, mounts for two AA size batteries. So basically, the range from two to three point six volts. It's a range for battery supply, but we also uh, can uh, deliver the product, or you can embed the product with different battery types and uh, different connector sizes. Uh, second thing is that uh, we produce the product uh, with uh, some of our products are produced uh, for multi-zone so they are equipped with a power amplifier and this device uh, enables you uh, if you are for example in a metallic case or something you can uh, extend the power out of the device if the, if the power is consumed by the case itself by the housing then out of the uh product itself uh so beyond the edges of the housing the uh, the um, uh, radio uh how you say the the emission is um in the allowed uh 14 dvs so basically you can extend uh, or give it more power with the power amplifier and if the product itself that you are embedding the simple pack 2 is consuming some of the power you can you can give it more by the power amplifier yeah. uh, this applies of course only for rc1 and rc3 it doesn't apply that much for rc2 or rc4 yes. because that we are at the, at the maximum power but for rc1 for instance if you want to produce fridges and you want to embed simple pack into a fridge so you would you would be you would be uh, you would be emitting uh, not at 14 dB but you would be a bit emitting at 16 dB uh, or, or 20 dB I would say uh, you can emit by 20 dB because then you'll be you would be measuring the emission emission pattern of all the all the fridge and all the fridge then after the attenuation you would get uh, 14 or 16 dB out of the the fridge so so if you have complicated environments where you really need uh, metal casings for instance uh, so you can definitely push the push uh, uh, using push the simple pack or simple pack embedded you can push it to go past the 16 db internal additive deploy sensors so for the embedded projects you can decide what kind of sensors you want on the device those those are all those are we have drivers and we have pcb designs and we have tested and we have firmware for all of those uh, uh, we have uh, read switch dry contact as a classical external magnet uh, accelerometer any kind of impact any kind of change orientation magnetometer or e-compass uh, when you need to detect orientation in the vertical axis so when you need to detect uh, for instance door opening uh, or if you want to know whether the door is closed or open that's something that's uh, that's available because the, the device tells you what is the direction of the north pole uh gyroscope we have implemented a gyroscope uh, for one use case which is uh, parameter so you can do parameter uh, style of projects uh, but you can use also gyroscope if you have an inertial movement and you need to decide whether the, the device has, has has moved in in the space without a, any kind of huge acceleration Precise temperature and humidity sensor inside the barometer. We have barometer inside for the, especially for the monarch tracking or for the monarch triggering. Uh, and classical Wi Fi positioning, including Wi Fi Atlas, uh, Sigfox uh, Wi Fi Atlas. And we are also supporting uh, the Wi Fi super local positioning with the precision of two to three meters. Uh, it's not the Wi-Fi super local positioning. It's uh, it's not supported on the backend yet. Um, on, on, the, on the I would say on the IOFROC platform, but it's in, embedded in the firmware. And if you want to develop, if you want to use it, so uh, so you can you you can use that one. Uh, we have a, a question here from Krasimir. We'll we'll see. Uh, we'll wait for that for the end. We have uh, external antenna. External antenna, no, we currently don't plan for external antennas. If it would be a really huge project, you can all, we can always do a PCB where we would be, where we would cut off the uh, Sigfox agency designed uh, PCB antenna 
and we would do a, an um, SMD uh, uh, PIF connector. Uh, but we try. We it depends on it depends on the use case. We are not sure whether the external antennas uh, brings that much. It doesn't bring if, if the antenna. It's it's uh, it's just external. It doesn't bring that much. Uh, if you, if the antenna would be would be on on a long tail, so in some use cases it could be used, but then you have the problem with the impedance. And so if it, if, it, if it will be a huge project, we we can we can talk about that. Uh, but currently we have no plans in the roadmap to have external antenna. Uh, yeah, the the the, the cover package is a cover package completely up to you. We are basically it's it's uh it's what embedded means that uh, you have no you are getting just the pc it depends you can some of the embedded uh, solutions uh, for instance the mouse traps we are using our casings and it kind of works as an embedded solution because it's done directly in the factory but for most of the use cases we are providing just the pcb and the pcb can be either with the battery or uh, the battery can be designed and can be part if we are talking for instance with the fridge so you can take the power. You can take the power from the fridge, and you would use just a super cap, uh, super capacitor, in order to bridge uh, the power disruption of a fridge. So it depends on on the project. The batteries last ten years. Yeah, it depends always on the the, the main load on the batteries. Is is the main load on on the batteries is always a uh, number of messages. So uh, from the very small battery, this is the this is the bigger battery. How do we have small battery here somewhere? This is the, this is the bigger battery. Uh, this is the bigger battery. We are getting uh, thirty thousand messages out of the bigger one. We have the smaller one. We get ten thousand ten thousand messages. And if you are using, for instance, uh, two AA batteries, as we are using in the simple industry. Uh, uh, a battery. Uh, so this is a small battery. We are getting ten thousand. We are getting ten thousand messages out of the small battery. And if you are using two AA batteries, so you are getting one hundred thousand messages. Uh, most of the sensors are not consuming that much because we are pulling them, or strobing them, or pulling them in intervals, so the MCU is sleeping all the time, and the, the consumption of the of this, most of the sensors is negligible. And if we are showing the pieces, I would say that the simple industry, actually, it's a, it's a perfect piece of embedded, because <laughs> we are using the same That's PCB, cool. and we are embedding it into different housing with different battery holders. So if you take the simple industry internal, it's basically an embedded where you put the, uh, our PCB into without the battery and you have a new product. So even simple industry and simple monitor is, a, is an embedded product, basically. Okay. Come on, Paula. Okay. Well, <clears throat> and here I would need to... David is Tadeusz, but it's not here uh, yet. Most probably, I, I I would need David here to to join me because he he far better understands the combination of two binary and two analog inputs. So I leave that to. No, no, no. He's the, he's not he's not here yet, but he'll be uh, coming soon. Uh, basically, what you can do is that we are able to connect two external inputs. And they can be connected either as, as switches, so binary state, uh, switch on and or switch off, or they can act as two analog inputs because they are going into the MCU uh, ADC, ADC, ADC converter that's 12-bit. Uh, uh, but uh, and uh, it can be it can be on wires. We are we are uh, we are kind of uh, using that for. For some of the projects of some of the people here in the, on the webinar, and uh, we are using it for instance, the switches are used for the master monitoring. Uh, the, we have a big use case for the general monitoring where we are using uh, two external NTC uh, ther thermoprobes, and we are using float sensors, external access switches. 
uh, electronic seals, uh, external IT, 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 uh, I2C sensors. So there are many options uh, what, what you, that you can do. What, what you can do. Uh, for some of the external sensors, we have already the firmware ready. So we have the firmware ready for the switches, and we have it ready for the for instance, NTC uh, thermoprobes. For some of the use cases or some of the projects, the firmware would need to be adjusted. Uh, what is really cool, I think, is that you can always combine the external sensors with the internal ones so for instance you can have you can uh, either an example would be for instance if you would have a float sensor that would be external you can use internal wi-fi positioning and you can combine the data from the float sensor with the wi-fi positioning or with the temperature sensing internal so you can you can do a lot of combinations there is an example from japan when uh, the client wants to monitor uh, containers, but they want to monitor uh, temperature inside of the container, but obviously it's much better to have the antenna outside of, of the container. So basically they stick the simple industry on top of the container, uh, where there is better uh, reception of the Wi-Fi and better emission of the Sigfox radio, but they on a wire, lead the wire into the, uh, into the container and they measure the temperature inside of the container and they can have even external temperature, the ambient temperature out of out of the container. So this is, for example, an example of a probe, external probe we are using to measure temperature on, on a pipe. So just stick this clamp on a pipe and then you measure contact temperature on a pipe. It's basically connected to the simple backboard and you can consider it as embedded yeah, and I would also like to welcome David Peer, our CTO, who is uh, even more technical than the, even more technical than Vaslav is. So, if you we have a, we have, we have a question here, whether the uh, we have a question here from Kasimir. Um, maybe a simple uh, to uh, twice analog input. Uh, zero to thirty volts for battery monitoring. I would assume that would need an external converter because we are not able to process uh, one to 30, 30 volts inside. I would assume. Yes. So, so it would need. We we are able to the external analog inputs. They are limited by three point six volts as well. Or three point six. We are limited to to three point six. We are not going. We are not able to go up to ten volts. No. No. So the external, the external analog inputs can go only up to two volts, uh, only up to three point six volts. So uh, if, they, uh, if if the if the input is zero to thirty, so there would need to be. A it can be converted, but it's simply by a resistor divider, for instance. Resistor divider. It depends yes. on. It depends on. The, <laughs> it depends on uh, uh, the required accuracy. It can be done easy way, or it can be done more. Uh, uh, even if it's external IDC, it's possible. So, <clears throat> so yeah. then I think uh, a, a really good example that is mentioned here on this slide, but was not mentioned um, uh, in a detail by Pavel, is external I2C sensors. I think David uh, can uh, elaborate a bit more on external I2Cs because there is plenty of I2C sensors you can use and you can directly plug them to, to SimplePack. <coughs> Basically, as Václav said, there is already uh, a lot of uh, external uh, pre-made uh, sensors, for instance, humidity sensor, uh, where <coughs> you can use uh, I2C uh, interface there is limitation of length of cable. It should be maximum recommended one meter, but two meter will work still okay. But uh, yeah, it's possibly generally it's generally possible to connect anything I square C compatible. I think there are basically two standards that are the most common for external sensors, and there's the SPI and I two C, and basically we can get any external sensor you can imagine off uh, with I2, I2C, correct, David? Yes, there are more industrial standards like RS485. Uh, and I think we can add such functionality as well. But mm. 
It depends on use case. It's yeah. just a software logic that can be embedded into the firmware. Uh, if you need another protocol, for example, Modbus or something, it can be done on the wires. Go on, Paula. Uh, okay, so the, the, the so the specs for analog input is zero to three point six volts. So that's correct. There's a question here, and can but we can send the presentation after the meeting. Yeah, the presentation will be pasted online on, on, on in our blog section just after the meeting. Uh, so I have. Uh, you can also do three D print housing squares. So if you if you have a special uh, special requirements, for instance, we were. Doing an embedding solu embedded solution, uh, the the left picture, it's uh, um, it's a, a track a sensor. It's it's a sensor that uh, that detects track big door opening or closing, and we have embedded and is done by by Swiss company. By, yeah, but yeah, but the original sensor, it's that's a big company. That's Honeywell. by Honeywell. And we have embedded a simple pack into the Honeywell solution in order to uh, enable Sigfox. And this is deployed in Switzerland. Uh, those are some US examples how you can how you can do some fixtures for uh, for some of the um, uh, cage tracking, for instance, uh, where we think again that for the cage tracking, what is preferential solution is not to do it and an add-on, but to put it directly into the cage into the or trolleys. Trollis production. Maybe I will mention uh, before the questions. I will I will mention uh, what's on the roadmap. We have three major projects that we are working on currently. Uh, one is uh, enabling GPS, so we are working on GPS for Simple Pack. That's one project. Uh, another, which is really important, is uh, enabling over the air uh, configuration. And, uh, and firmware update, so you will be able to massively configure the devices in the room, and you will be able to update the firmware in the room wirelessly without any result without disassembling. And the third project is that we are we are working on machine learning, so especially for preventive maintenance uh, and for some of the use cases that that we need to solve, uh, we are able to detect, for instance, the vibration patterns. Instead of sending raw data of the vibration, we are able to detect uh, this is a vibration of this type, this is a vibration of another type, and we, we are just reporting the type of type of vibration uh, that's being registered. So this is this is those are three major projects that we are currently working at, uh, and uh, and that should be available sometimes in the September, September, uh, September, also. September, September, October time frame. Yes. Maybe uh, again one addition for embedded. Sometimes you really need to analyze a huge amount of data. So uh, at the moment we are working, or we have uh, prototypes of uh, of a GSM or LTE modem that can be directly connected to to your embedded product, and you can stream the stream the data out. You can analyze them and then, for example, upload them for the for the machine learning. So for embedded solutions, sometimes you need a really huge amount of data. So you can log them directly onto some flashcard, or uh, you can send them uh, online via LTE modem. So this is also a project we work uh, work on for various purposes. Yeah, uh, I will put here one URL into the chat, and I will then update the presentation in order to, to have it in the presentation. We have a website which is called, called guru.simplehw.eu, and there are three forms or three visits. One is the forum regarding the use case, one is the forum regarding the selection of devices, and one is the forum regarding embedded solutions. So if you would have any kind of embedded solution project, uh, please just fill in the form, and, and we will receive it, and we, we can start to work on the, to start to work on the project. We normally don't do it free of charge, so we have some kind of minimal minimal fee for the minimal fee for the project start, but it's deductible from the final order. So uh, in order to to have to have uh, to be to be sure that you take it seriously, so we ask for a small amount of money. Uh, but the amount is uh, deductible from the final fi final product prices. When we are talking about pricing of the simple pack, uh, 
uh, embedded solution. So they are uh, currently the level of pricing is uh, roughly the same as we have for the as we have for the um, normal normal product. So for the for the, for, for those being in case, uh, because embedded, it's even it seems that we are saving money on the casing. Uh, it's not that easy in the pro production. It's a project-based stuff. So, for instance, if you need a read switch uh, being embedded, so the price would be roughly the same as the sample pack with the read switch uh, inside of it. So this is a good, good for any kind of business calculation. Start with the pricing of the normal sample pack. Uh, for the for the IDs and pack numbers, so the IDs uh, we are putting uh, the IDs because we are we are not able to laser them. On the on the casings, so we do we do stickers on the PCBs directly. So the IDs have stickers, and you get a CSV file with IDs and with spec numbers. Yeah, and we print normally uh, multiple copies of the of the IDs. Uh, we can also do different. You can customize the stickers, so you can uh, stick the sticker, for example, on the packaging we will be having, or on the end product. So we can give you. For example, three or four copies of the same sticker with ID, uh, so you can stick it on the box or on the product you embed simple back to. Yeah, there's a question about Legionella. <laughs> we'll have a specific we have a specific products uh, already with the NTC pipe sensors for Legionella. So if you are interested in the Legionella uh, Legionella uh, products, so just ping me an email and I'll try to send you. We have the photos everywhere. Everything will be. Talking about it more, uh, I think within two weeks. Uh, but we have it done, and it's it's working. It's already working. So no, uh, no, no. You you don't need for a general. You don't need to have def it, If if you would be doing an embedded solution for a general, yes. If you would just need a, a product for a general monitoring, we we think we have a really cool product based on the simple industry. It's a good price point and with uh, better life of 10 years. So this is something that uh, it's it's ready to be shipped. Release and delivery date, yes, Christine is asking about, about that one. We know that, especially for the simple, simple industry, uh, we were a little bit late uh, by a few months, uh, with the, with the, especially with the casings. What we have done, what we have done is that in, in November or December time frame, we were thinking that we would uh, deploy it with non-replaceable batteries. Um, but because uh, we have this new project or new order for the GPS, and there was a push for replaceable batteries, so we opted to do a design and to do to do uh, to do a simple industry with the replaceable battery holders using uh, regular we are not using regular AAs. they are the uh, lithium soc2 uh, batteries but they are the aa size batteries so you can replace batteries uh, with regular batteries and this required this required a lot of a lot of uh, a lot of redesign uh, that one thing. The other one was that we were uh, that we were uh, uh, sometimes chasing the people doing uh, the mechanics. is not the easiest one. You know, PCB doing PCBs. It's really easy. Doing firmware, it's tricky. Uh, but doing mechanics is always the, the, the most complicated. The most complicated stuff. So for simple industry, this is the latest. Uh, this is the latest. Uh, this is the latest. This is the latest. This is the latest, uh, and we, we we started we started already. We ordered the the molds, so so the molds are being currently produced in, in China, uh, and so this is the this is simple industry. It's a PCB that holds two battery, and it there is the simple pack. It's the simple pack itself is in per, in perpendicular position to the to the other PCB. Uh, this, this, uh, this, there's no, there's very little uh, capram, uh, capra, 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 capra on the PCB, so it doesn't, it doesn't, uh, it it acts as a ground plane, so even the the radio performance should be better, and this this one is being isolated in the in 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 in, in, in the holder, and there is a there is a 
uh, there is a cover which goes over it. So it's IP60. It will be IP67 rated, not not 68, 67. And uh, this uh, this down uh, down uh, this uh, this piece, which is the fixture. We have, we have also a fixture that can be directly used for um, uh, wall mounting. So it will not have the holes on side. Leave it here. Oh, yeah. So this is the, this is the it's, this, this is still a 3D print. So this is you screw this you screw, you screw this uh, you screw this to the wall, and then you just. And uh, you screw this to the wall, and then you just put the uh, you put it over it, and uh, it will be one color, one two colors. But this will be this will be, for instance, uh, a fixture for simple meter, uh, for interior, for for room application. Where you don't want to see any holes. So this is the, this is the stuff that is currently being produced. So uh, that's all currently from our side. Uh, uh, again, this uh, embedded is a, it's it's always a project-based stuff. It's uh, we have seen projects running from one thousand pieces, so so one thousand. That's a good starting point. I we think where it makes sense. Of course, if you have some, if you have really uh, a project where you can afford to have. Uh, where well, you can afford to have higher price of the, of the final product, so even a few hundreds are, are doable. But then the project price needs to be spread out, uh, spread out, spread out a little bit higher. Uh, and this is all from our side. We are taking any questions. If you have any questions, we are ready to answer them. And thank you so far for the questions because there are, there have been a lot of questions so far. Uh, simple pack for always analog inputs are available as prototype. Mm -hmm. The two when we are talking about simple pack itself, so simple, not embedded simple pack, but simple pack itself. Uh, original plans were that we could have some analog inputs into the simple pack. We we cancelled the project. So if you need to have external inputs, the external inputs would work either with simple industry, so you can have external inputs into simple industry, or you would have to have it as an um, embedded solution. So uh, so I don't know what, what, whether we are. So if it would be simple pack for all embedded, uh, so then yes, it's it's uh, available. If it's simple industry, that's and if it's simple industry, yes, that's. Uh, that's available and it's the same situation. We are waiting for the final. We are waiting for the for the final PCBs that should be SMD uh, next week. And next we have already the 3D prints, everything, and we should be able to uh, ship it out. Ship it out uh, next week. Uh, the only thing uh, you have all, always think about the business case. So, for instance, if you want to have this analog monitor, this analog monitoring, this analog input, we need to understand what is the use case uh, in order to be able to uh, report, uh, to put it properly into the firmware, into the firmware logic. But most, most probably for this analog inputs, we would be reporting uh, just raw data to you, and you would be able then to transfer the raw data, the raw voltage measurement, you would be able to transfer it into your logic. For this kind of battery, for instance, for this kind of battery monitoring that Gresimir is asking for. Okay, uh, if you have no more questions, thanks a lot for your attention. I would like to thank uh, once more Václav uh, for joining us and David here for joining us. If you would have any more questions, don't hesitate to contact us uh, via via forums or emails. Uh, and I wish you, I wish you a nice. May 1st, the Labor Day. Uh, we have a holiday here. I don't know how in your countries, but we have a holiday. And uh, looking forward to really nice projects uh, working with uh, embedded solution because we think embedded is the future of IoT. Thank you. Have a nice day. Bye bye. 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 <clears throat>
Čiže je to, ako kam, že sa vám tam dá 